The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was going to visit the graveyard, al-Baqi'ah. He passed by a woman sitting at a grave, crying, lamenting the loss of her son. She didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or recognize him. She was crying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said to her, Ya amat Allah, ittaqillaha wasbiri. Servant of Allah, have taqwa and have patience. She didn't recognize the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, oh, you've not been tested with my calamities. The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming behind him told her, this is the messenger of Allah. She was scared. She ran to catch up Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tell him, Ya Rasulullah, attaqillaha wa asbir. O Messenger of Allah, I will have taqwa and I will have patience. Qala innama sabru inda sadmati al-ula. Patience indeed is at first strike. That's patience. Patience indeed is at first strike. Imam Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi, one of the greatest figures in Islam, wrote a very small work called لا يعول عليه A book of things which you should never count on. He said, the second patience is never counted upon. It is the first patience. The first expression of patience, not the second. Because the second can be contemplated later on. But you would regret your anger in the beginning. You would regret that you, did, you were not able to handle the situation. Allah wants from you your first reaction to be regulated by Al-Quran, by a sunnah by the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why he is a good example for us. Regulating it. Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu ta'ala explains this and gives a very concrete example as an Imam al-Tabari narrates in the interpretation of the verse on patience. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ we will inflict, we will test you with some of uh, fear, hunger, lo loss of lives and fruits or harvests, yet give glad tidings to people of patience. One important here aspect of this verse people forget. There is what is known in the Arabic language, iltifat. Allah is addressing us. We will test you with his authority, ultimate authority. Then, he's addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَبَشِّرْ O Muhammad, وَبَشِّرْ يَا Muhammad, O Muhammad, give the glad tidings to the people of patience. Why? This turn, iltifat in balagha, rhetorics. Because he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the best example of patience. And you will not be able to teach people patience if you're not a good example of it and anything else. Coupling knowledge with practice. Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala an says, مَنْ ضَرَبَ كَفَّهُ بِفَخِذِهِ عِنْدَ سَمَاعِ الْمُصِيبَةِ فَقَدْ حَبِطَ ثَوَابُ صَبْرِهِ You know when we hear something bad, bad news, loss of a son, loss of a parent, loss in business, loss sometimes in exams, People express it in, in different ways. The most disciplined people would keep their mouth shut, wouldn't say anything bad, but something, they have to say something, they have to do something. So what they do is, they just strike with their hands on their thighs, something like that. Why did this happen? Why me? Something, without words, it's just something like that. Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala an says, anyone who does this, the rewards for his patience are gone. You see patience here, what it means? 
Patience is not pain taking. It's not the concept of, of forbearance as understood in the English language. Patience, as we heard in the description of, in the Quran, فَصَبْرٌ Jamil is beautiful because it is based ideologically, theologically, it is based on a principle of belief. فَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That's the theological foundation of patience. You may dislike one thing whilst it is good for you. And you may like another whilst it is bad for you. Indeed, Allah knows, not you. You do not. So this is, you start from this. Allah knows what is better for me more than me knowing what is better for myself. That's the basic belief. Then, as a believer in Allah, I know that he won't do for me but good. This is expressed in the hadith of Sahih Muslim when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُسْلِمِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ Wondrous is the case of a believer. When he's visited by calamities, his forbearance, and this is good for him. When he's given bounties, he's thankful. And this is good for him. This is not for other than the believer. So everything that comes from Allah is sweet. 